Good evening, everyone, and welcome to our virtual Emerging and Deep Tech series. My name is Jamie Burridge. I'm the New South Wales State Manager at the ACS, and I'll be your MC this evening. Although we are meeting virtually, I'd like to continue to acknowledge the traditional custodians on the lands on which we meet today and pay my respects to their elders, past, present, and emerging. ACS remains committed to providing our members with premium events and top quality content throughout the series. Before I introduce our speakers today, I'd like to bring to your attention some important information regarding CPD hours. When attending virtual events, in order to claim and qualify for the required CPD hours, you must attend the online event in its entirety, which will be tracked by the ACS events team. If you are using a cloaking software program, your attendance cannot be recorded and CPD hours cannot be allocated. This does not include the use of VPN. Please allow up to two weeks for CBD to be allocated to your membership profile. Before we kick off, we have a bit of housekeeping to cover. Uh, the webinar is being recorded and a recording will be shared after the webinar. This session will go for about an hour. Um, Unleash Live will present and we'll be answering our questions at the end of the presentation. If you have any questions during the event, please remain muted and use the question function on the top right of your screen. Please feel free to share this event on social media using the hashtag ACSDeepTech. And the theme of today's event is leveraging your computer vision expertise. Now, I'm honored to welcome the expert team from Unleashed Live who work in uh, the Harbour City Labs, which is part of the ACS, and, uh, and who continue to, to thrive in the ICT sector. This event will feature just how Unleashed Live's technology connects to a wide range of camera types to run computer vision algorithms and structured data pushed out to clients for faster decision making. Some of the use cases include street cameras being used for monitoring pedestrians or dwell time for stationary cars at traffic lights. Unleashed Live has recently re received the accelerating commercialization grant from the Australian government to build out an AI app store. We are very, very glad to welcome uh, Unleashed Live and we have, we have the opportunity to ask the team questions during the Q&A session after the video presentation we are about to watch. This presentation has been put together by the following team at Unleash Live. We have Jason Greer, Head of Customer Success and the co-founder, uh, Hamid Fardost, the Head of Marketing and Strategic Partnerships, and James Kong, Head of Product and Experience. Uh, and they each look forward to answering your question shortly. Please enjoy. Vision is nature's most powerful sense. One that helps us make sense of the world around us. From a chameleon with 360 degree vision and the ability to transition between monocular and binocular, to humans who can analyze, process, and act upon vast amounts of information for visual inspections. The world of automation with computer vision has come a long way. With developments in cloud edge and edge computing, camera sensors increasingly in quality and a range of machine learning platforms coming together, industry can truly leverage this capability to reduce cost and risk and raise productivity. My colleagues and I will provide an overview of real-time video analytics for any connected camera and how computer vision developers can leverage the Unleash Live AI app store to deploy computer vision models in the cloud and make it accessible for our customers to activate. Unleash Live is an artificial intelligence video analytics solution provider. Its solution takes still and video imagery from any camera and it combines it with computer vision to deliver actionable data in real time so that the organizations have faster insights to drive down costs, improve productivity, increase accuracy, and improve safety. Fundamentally, Unleash Live is built as a platform to en enable both real-time and post-processing analytics for any computer vision model built across a wide range of different formats. Think of it as a capability rather than a specific tool for a given use case or application. Our enterprise customers love us for our cloud um, architecture built on AWS. We've decoupled the customer's camera of choice from the computer vision software analyzing the footage. So whether it be CCTV cameras, drones, smartphones, or action cams, they can use what they have or invest in what they want to rather than being tied in. Advancements in camera sensors and technology are everywhere. 
From aerial drone imagery and satellites providing high definition footage to mobile cameras that every workman has on site on, at hand. To CCTV and IP cameras which are coming online more and more every day. Our platform does not differentiate or distinguish between camera types. To us, they are all devices. And connecting them to the platform ranges from a few seconds to a few minutes, at which point the footage is live streaming in and being stored to the customer's library. We've made it simple as possible to unlock the power of visual data with, one with a one-step shop to house all visual data irrespective of the device it's coming from. No more footage trapped on a, a SD card or mobile devices or lost due to collaboration happening on FaceTime or WhatsApp video or something complicated like a VMS solution requiring license upgrades to access functionality. As mentioned, we're completely serverless and with all the heavy lifting being done in the AWS cloud or at edge depending on the customer's use case. Our core proposition is about enabling faster insights for our enterprise customers. And as such, we do not want to or expect to build all the computer vision models that they will require. This will be achieved through our AI app store where third party developers will be provided the infrastructure and tools to build, test and deploy. It's worth at this point to mention that there are two sides of Unleash Live. There is the platform builder and enabler and then there is the AI model development side. We pr principally see ourselves as the platform enabling third party developers to deploy models and build richer and faster tool sets for our enterprise customers. Our enterprise customers principally experience our product within, the work, within their workflows. That can be alerts in Slack, MS Teams, SMS and email. For Esri customers, live dashboards for visualization and AI, AI, API integration in ERP systems such as Salesforce. Unleash Live's AI self-serve platform is an extension of its existing computer vision development and deployment solution. Through the Accelerating Commercialization Grant, we have the funding from the Australian Government to bring this to life in the coming months. It, pro it will provide companies and individuals with the tools to rapidly develop and deploy computer vision algorithms, referred to as AI apps, to meet any business challenge where automation through vision can be performed better or equal to the outcome of manual processes. The self-serve platform will principally allow users to overcome the challenges of implementing AI apps with cloud-based computing power, off-the-shelf models and coding interfaces for ease of use. Additionally, the self-serve platform will provide an app store commercialization distribution mechanism which developers can attract customer organizations who are interested in utilizing their apps. Like any app store marketplace, there is a supply and demand side, like you would see in an enterprise app store. We encourage our developer community to think of use cases they feel would be of value. Unleash Live AI app development focus has been in the public sector public safety, renewables, mining, and other large infrastructure organizations with dispersed assets where lowering the cost and accessibility of inspections is increasingly valuable. It is estimated that the computer vision market will be $18.3 billion by 2025, with sectors across multiple industries where end users and their cameras will benefit from being connected to AI apps for, for their application. With regards to development of AI apps onto the platform, we expect to see the following groups take up the opportunity. Third party developers who have computer vision skills, however, may not have industry or commercialization experience. They're looking for customers and will take on the labeling training and the maintenance of the, their apps. For AI development houses, they may have an existing customer base and they're looking to expand their customer base with new apps or leverage their existing apps by deploying on Unleash Live. 
for in-house digital teams with AI models, development skills, and extensive image libraries, they can take advantage of Unleash Live to scale their projects across multiple sites or contract third-party developers for build and deployment. With regards to the demand side, our end business users have specific needs and they will engage they will be engaging with the, their internal digital, digital teams or third-party developers to take advantage of the platform. Additionally, we have a huge demand from drone pilots targeting, targeting specific industries. In effect, they fulfill the buyer capacity where they have extensive image libraries and know the challenge, needs, know the challenge needing to be overcome. Effectively, they are industry knowledge industry knowledge that need to be transferred and trained into computer vision models. And finally, we have enterprise organizations who wish to use the full end-to-end -end spectrum needs. They have the business not a challenge, the image library, and the capabilities to build an AI apps, and they just want a platform to deploy and run the insights. For all of these people, it starts with an idea and we'd love to speak to you about possible use cases. We want to make it easier than it's ever been before to get the outcome you're looking for. Whether that's a developer looking to monetize their IP or enterprise customers looking to extract fast insights by automating a specific visual task. This focus on enablement makes Unleash Live the perfect solution for deploying computer vision models at scale without being concerned about the hassle of managing hardware requirements on site or managing cameras and everything to do with getting access to visual data. After all, it's about visual data and the fact that we've made it easier than ever before to connect to any camera type and start streaming means the raw ingredients are there to make anything possible. There may be solutions in the market that enable training and deployment of applications on a marketplace. But the real benefit of deploying on Unleash Live's AI App Store is the access to customer video and imagery, meaning computer vision models are put to the test and working on real world scenarios. And we know in the real world, there are many factors that affect model performance, be it video and imagery quality, changing scenes or scenarios, or differences in lighting conditions. This is the reality we face Computer vision models must work with real footage and not just in controlled environments. The AI self-service platform is designed to create an ecosystem of supply and demand between computer vision developers and enterprises. Unleash Live's visual analytics solution enables access to enterprise customers from across public sector, public safety, renewables, mining, and other large infrastructure organizations. As you can imagine, these sectors are ripe for vision-based solutions and without connected camera capabilities, access to live video and imagery and data sets are available. These enterprises understand the potential of AI and often see computer vision solutions. However, they have limited internal capabilities, expertise and computing infrastructure to develop, train or deploy such algorithms. By providing an AI app build and deployment pipeline, we are laying the groundwork for enabling AI and developers to not just build, train, test, and deploy solutions, but to ensure the models developed are applicable to real world scenarios, benchmarked, and reaching commercial customers. Our AI App Store connects these two worlds, providing enterprises and organizations a storefront to browse and access computer vision solutions to solve their business and real world challenges. Accessing data and insights from computer vision is no easy task. Different users with varying needs access Unleash Life to get the data, insights, and analytics required. We have identified three different users depending on their computer vision capabilities and readiness. The first group of users are those who have needs that can be solved with an AI app that already exists on the App Store. For these users, they simply connect their devices, be it a camera, phone, or drone, Select the appropriate AI app and immediately begin running analytics for data extraction. With over 20 apps available on the App Store today, these users are able to access a range of applications such as traffic analysis, crowd density estimator, wind turbine fault detection, and virtual fencing. 
As this list of apps grows over time, customers can easily browse, select, and simply activate. The next group of users may not have an existing model ready to go, but wish to build and deploy on the App Store. These users can enter the developer sandbox ecosystem through a command line interface at any stage of the app build process, whether it be coding, dataset access, or model training. Once ready, developers can simply deploy the model on cloud infrastructure and it will be packaged and made available on the App Store. The third group of users may already have a model that is pre-built and ready for deployment. These users can simply submit the models for quality control, benchmarking, and like any App Store, provide necessary information, which may take the form of descriptions, sample imagery, optimal parameters for use, and instructions. This makes it easy for developers who already have models that are ready to go. Developers can leverage this pipeline to scale their models to the cloud, increase their audience and exposure, and monetize their solutions. We know that developers work in their own unique ways. So our pipeline is built on AWS infrastructure, supported by NVIDIA instances in the cloud for training and inference, and support a range of frameworks and structures, including TensorFlow, PyTorch, and OpenCV. The platform is designed to be flexible, catering for a range of different needs and proficiencies. Let's expand on the AI app build process and what is included in the end-to-end -end pipeline for developers. The AI self-serve pipeline has been designed by engineers and developers for engineers and developers. As part of our development process, we identified a number of key challenges and needs that this pipeline resolves. First, limited exposure to real-world challenges, problems, and clients. Developers want to focus on coding and often don't have the time or access to clients to deeply understand the specific needs, parameters, and outputs. Access to datasets for training can be difficult to obtain. Training takes vast amounts of data, sometimes as much as 500 to thousands of images per object class or type. Access to these unique datasets sometimes is just not available, let alone getting access to structured and unstructured datasets for model training. Even if a developer were to get access to a dataset, it is not easy to access image labeling tools or subject matter experts for validation and verification. Difficult to benchmark and test. Without accessing other models or real-world footage, it can be challenging to conduct quality tests for model benchmarking. Most computer vision models work with high accuracies and speed in perfect ideal conditions, but often fail when applied to real-world scenarios. Constraints and access to computing hardware. Model training speed is directly related to compute power, and most developers do not have access to high-powered computing or server racks, and keeping hardware up to date can be costly. Cloud computing is available, but not easily accessible or cost effective. Finally, we know that marketing, commercializing, and monetizing models and solutions at scale is difficult. To address these challenges, we created a complete cloud-based end-to-end pipeline for AI app creation and delivery. Starting with dataset management, we provide access to a number of different types of data, public and open datasets, private customer datasets provided with permission, third-party synthetic datasets, or raw datasets captured from connected cameras. Next, we have an entire labeling workflow, which provides developers with the flexibility to either conduct labeling tasks themselves, distribute labeling tasks to third-party labeling providers, or prepare labels into tasks for their own internal teams to manage. We also provide our own internal labeling interface to enable task preparation, dividing images, preparing label names, label colors, and assigning those tasks to different labelers. Labeled images can be quality controlled and converted to a range of label formats, such as Coco, YOLO, LabelMe, Pascal, MOT, TF Record for processing. Next, model training is executed in the cloud via Amazon AWS EC2 instances, with the option of selecting high powered and higher performance instances if required. The entire model training process is iterative and often involves pre-processing, labeling, as well as model training and retraining if needed. Model versioning allows developers to track their model iterations as they interactively quality control annotations and validate model performance and accuracy. The platform provides standardized datasets for benchmarking purposes prior to model deployment. 
This benchmarking process is critical to ensure high quality AI apps into the App Store. Models can be assessed across a number of performance metrics, including accuracy, speed, F1 score, and robustness. As we strive for the importance of usability of such models in real-world scenarios, developers can expect that robustness tests a number of attributes, such as whether or not the model works on moving or stationary cameras, the range of weather conditions to maintain sufficient accuracy, and how well the model performs on low and high quality imagery. Like submitting any app to an app store that is customer facing, we ask developers to submit additional information as part of the AI app package prior to review and approval. For the app to be successful, developers need to submit app name, description, sample output images, instructions for use, and contact information. Once submitted, the entire package will be reviewed for quality assurance and launched into the AI app store. In addition to the app creation process, the AI App Store will also provide customers and prospects a place to submit requests for models and applications to be utilized. This aims to guide developers as to what is in demand in the market. Underpinning this developer workflow is a backend that has been created for scale. This pipeline is designed to fulfill a number of key success metrics, ensuring that it is future-proof, focused on high performance, that multiple environments are supported so that they are working on cloud instances, Kubernetes, and edge deployment. We also ensure that it supports a growing ecosystem and is language inclusive, ensuring extensibility. Last but not least, everything is open and containerized. Let's recap the steps to develop an AI app. It all starts with an idea and an Unleashed Live developer account. Then to progress with the AI app, the developers will require footage or images to start training the model. This footage can be created by the developer themselves or in conjunction with a client. In some situations, Unleashed Live will have a pre-existing data set for use by developers. The next steps will be develop the model, train the model on public or private data sets, upload the num classes, PB and PB text into the Unleashed Live developer sandbox, test the code against videos in the Unleashed Live sandbox, deploy the code to the cloud for compute, benchmark and quality, control tests against live stream and library videos for performance, submit package model for approval, including description, pricing, and sample images. Once the model is received, Unleash Live tests, approves, and publishes the model to the App Store. Then it is made available for purchase, with the option to define whether the model is available publicly or privately. Once live, the app can be improved upon regularly with version control and republished. Now that being said, let's dive a little deeper into specific applications and use cases. Cities and transport are just one industry vertical where we've seen significant demand, and you can see why. No additional capex, complex legacy CCTV cameras, and a real need to stitch the bigger picture of what's happening on platforms across a large network, and all that done in real time. The global pandemic has also served to extend the use case applications. Where previously we would be focused on productivity within the sector, we're now heavily invested in servicing a genuine need to better understand how the disease is spread on public transport. Face mask apps run on CCTV cameras at train platforms to provide real-time understanding of adoption. Additionally, social distancing adherence is monitored and we red flag the number of instances where social distancing is not being adhered and face masks are not being worn. It's also important to mention that we're running anonymizer on the feeds to strip out any personal identifiable data. So no privacy is invaded. We're not interested in tracking individuals or conducting facial recognition. And as part of the App Store rollout, we will be sharing guidelines on the topics such as privacy and security, which we expect our developer community to engage us with and into a dialogue. To elaborate more on use cases in the transport sector, the customer in this example is a major US metro provider in Miami-Dade County. They had a simple challenge with the onset of COVID. With ticketing gates opened to reduce bottlenecks for riders, they lost the data source that helped them determine resourcing and demand planning on their network. With this one decision to make the service temporarily free, 
The management at Miami-Dade County Metro knew they had an existing resource that they could tap into, and that being their camera systems with Unleash Live. In essence, their requirement is pretty simple. An AI app that counts people crossing into a specific predetermined zone with the data reported on a daily basis. In this example, Unleash Live used their own existing AI app. Had the use case required a different app, one which we did not have, we would naturally look to leveraging the AI self-service app store. So let's break down the workflow to describe this use case had Unleash Live not been the developer of the AI app. Unleash Live quotes customers based on the price the AI app has been set in the, in the app store, along with usage costs of the Unleash Live platform, such as cameras, number of hours of processing, and any additional bespoke professional services. We work with Miami-Dade Metro to fast track connectivity of their cameras, define the capture zones using the inbuilt tools and confirm the method and timing of reporting. From there onwards, the operations team at Miami-Dade Metro only experience Unleash Live as a reported data set. Additionally, we would work with the developer to ensure the robustness and performance of the AI app and make recommendations for further development or adjustments based on camera placement, lighting, and so forth. Theoretically, this same app can be used for many use cases outside of transport, and the investment of time and effort to refine its performance is definitely a worthwhile endeavor. We have a range of organizations, all with a wide range of use cases and different levels of expertise with the goal of leveraging computer vision to improve productivity, save lives and improve workflows. Alcoa, a world leader in mining, has a number of use cases where real-time cloud-based computer vision can make a difference in productivity and quality of service. They're currently a customer of Unleashed Lives and have a plan to expand their internal capabilities to build and deploy their own apps. One example where drone imagery is used to identify the percentage of residue over their sludge dams. Utilizing the video and imagery to train, deploy the app to identify the percentage of residue, allowing their inspectors to make faster decisions. They will also be open to third-party developers building solutions for them. Smart Beaches initiative is a partnership between Lake Macquarie Council, Northern Beaches Council and the University of Technology Sydney, Australia to digitise, collect and distribute a wide range of data insights in real time for key stakeholders to increase safety and efficiency of beaches in New South Wales, Australia. They'll be looking to further develop out an app centred around improving safety and the experience beachgoers have. They have access to council cameras as well. The University of New South Wales wants a service where they can develop and sell their own AI models and Unleash Live is a perfect place to do just that. And finally, GHD, a global engineering company, will be looking to develop, deploy apps, utilising their own in-house scientists for their professional services team to sell as part of their global offering. With our goal to make AI more accessible, we've identified these as some of the top challenges needing to be overcome for computer vision engineers to develop, deploy and scale for success. As part of the developer community, we will increasingly share real world problems and use cases our clients are looking for. So the effort invested in development potentially has a known customer. We want to enable the widest range of frameworks to ensure we're capturing as much talent as possible. And in many instances, we have access to subject matter experts for image labeling and concept validation. We've learned from our own experience when it comes to highly specialized use cases. Having access to someone who really understands the value and insights, it's critical for success. We provide access to quality data sets and a robust process for quality control, validation and benchmarking so that developers have access to a platform for offering high quality, high performing AI apps for the market. So what's next? Well, there's a lot we haven't spoken about, like revenue models, IP protection, marketing support, and the long-term roadmap. We're also interested in any use cases or specific requirements that are particularly relevant to you and your engagement with the platform. So we'd love to hear from you. 
And in time, we will certainly be sharing more. If you found this session to be useful, then please do drop us a note at getstarted at unleashedlive.com. Our time for trial launch is mid this year. We're looking for experienced developers to join us on this exciting journey, along with organizations wanting to develop their own apps or keen to adopt computer vision. All are welcome. To stay abreast of developments and become one of the first to be part of this exciting initiative, drop your email on this page and we'll let you know how you can get early release and much more. Thank you. Thank you very much, Hamid, James, and Jason for your ex expert insights and for the presentation. Um, now, I hear from the ACS team that there were indeed dozens of questions asked, so I'd like to thank our member audience for submitting these, and I encourage you to continue. Um, so let's ju jump straight into it so we can get through as many as we can over the next 30 minutes. So first question, uh, we're going to direct to Hamid. Um, Hamid, are there any security issues regarding computer vision technology, such as privacy leaks from cameras. Well, thank you very much for asking this. Uh, we get this question obviously quite a lot, and it's great to get this out of the way um, first off off the cab rank. And so there's two two answers, if you like. There's two sides of the answers. One is a bit more of a technical one, which in in that we we encrypt all of our videos end to end with data in transit. Once the video is processed, um, we have a choice around what we do with that data. But uh, overall, we partner with AWS. Uh, we adhere to the highest standards and safety protocols. You'd be pleased to know that we're, we've passed multiple well-architected reviews with AWS. Uh, we're a public safety partner uh, with uh, AWS again. So yet the numerous steps that you have to jump through to be able to work for governments and, and so forth. So that's one kind of one bit more technical answer. On a, on a more grounded approach, we're not in the business of we're not in the business of um, identifying uh, people or personal identifiable data or um, impeachments of, of privacy. And so we give our customers the option of whether they want to store the visual data or whether they just want to maintain the, the metadata that sits underneath. So in many instances, customers decide that actually when it comes to say the um, counting people at, at, at a, on a platform uh, they'd rather the data just wasn't there anyway so we keep the underlying and then we strip out and uh, have it the video deleted hope that answers the question uh, thanks Hamid and uh, this other question I'm going to direct to you as well um, this question what kind of issues does Unleash Live resolve or target? Can you tell us about the application that you have recently launched? Sure. So there's um, so primarily think of us about really about distributed assets, in the sense that uh, you have high value assets distributed over vast geographies, and we kind of think of we kind of think of people as part of that category as well. And so we do a lot of work in the cities and transport space because. People are valuable assets and they need to, we need to ensure that we're giving uh, quality of service to people living in cities and so forth. But we also do a lot of work where assets are distributed and they're expensive like uh, wind farms and solar panels uh, or uh, power lines. Anything that essentially requires uh, high levels of assessment and inspection, but potentially distributed over vast distances is a perfect application that Unleashed Live currently works on. Now, that's not to say that that is every application or use case. There are a, a world of applications that you guys will be aware of and know of that perhaps we will never get into. And that's really the crux, if you like, of why we are going down the path of this self-serve AI app store. It's to harness all of the applications and the usabilities of the developer community uh, with regards to live streaming video. 
Thanks, Tammy. That's a, that's a great answer. Um, the next question I'd like to direct to James. Uh, James, how often will the app train and will it train with real customers' data? Yeah, no, thank you so much for asking that question. Um, first of all, absolutely. Um, the way that our platform is designed is to train with real customer data. So obviously we provide the option to training with open data sets, but a lot of the private data sets that we have access to is um, something that's of, of extreme value to a lot of uh, developers and engineers. You know, you know, not all customers are willing to share the data, but for those who are, who are you know, it's obviously sharing non-confidential data. And the way that app training works typically is the more information you can feed it, the better and smarter it becomes. A very simple analogy is kind of like when you're raising a child. When your child is young, you might be able to tell, you know, the baby that this is a car. Only when it gets older, you're able to tell the difference between a car and a truck and a bus. And only when you have the understanding, grasp of those basic fundamentals, do you say, you know, this is a Toyota or a Lexus or a Ute. Really, that analogy really translates to the way that we think about models. The more that we can give very specific and very curated data sets, the smarter and more that you can actually train the model. So I would say no model ever stops training and stops learning. Uh, it just depends on how much you actually feed it. Thank you, James. Um, question for Jason. Um, sorry, Jason, this is actually a, a three in one question. Um, <laughs> what is the current scenario of AI usage in video monitoring? How wide, widely used is it? And would you recommend to learn about AI implementations in video monitoring at this stage for future job opportunities? Right, that's a <clears throat> really relevant question, especially if you're looking at careers going forward. And I'll start by answering the, the, the last one going forward. Um, yes, if you're looking at a career, <clears throat> AI is one of the um, biggest growing industries um, globally now. And uh, in particular, I'd be thinking visual AI. So in other words, uh, there's, there's, there's cameras everywhere. There's thousands of cameras everywhere. The um, use cases can be anything from uh, construction sites, cameras on construction sites, all the way through to your precincts and your cities, uh, as well as drones that fly across the, um, the, um, the, the in the air, the aerial, doing inspections. And then you're not forgetting your handheld smartphone, which nowadays doubles as a um, inspection camera. Now. Coupling that with AI actually opens up a treasure trove of information that a lot of sensors don't give you. Um, vision is one of the most powerful, and I know I said this at the very start, vision is one of the most powerful sensors, and we truly believe in it. Um, AI helps us to be able to identify all of the activities that are happening within the vision, whether it be an image or whether it be a video. And by combining that and uh, utilizing that data, a lot of companies and organizations uh, around the world are getting a better grip of what their um, processes are, improving their efficiencies, uh, reducing their costs, and more importantly, um, they're doing their jobs better with a, a far safer outcome. So yes, the answer, if you're thinking about going into studying AI, I would definitely jump on board. There's is, is a hell of a lot there, a uh, hell of a lot of opportunities and they're only growing. Thanks, Jason. Um, next question for James from our audience. Uh, where, where does Unleash Live stand in regards to the development of this platform? No, great question. Um, so everything that you've seen here today in today's presentation is some, it's very functional, right? So we have at least an MVP capability for everything that you've mentioned here. So all the way from the way that we manage data sets um, through to we, the way we do labeling, training, et cetera. Our approach right now is that we internally at Unleash Live follow the very much the same process on how we're developing models. So what we're looking for right now is how do we actually scale that capability? So how do we go out to the community, learn about additional challenges that we might not know, think about how we can actually take in very specific feedback and really, really scale this offer. What we're looking to do is really ensure that one, we want to make sure that we can get our customers loving this platform. We want to get more feedback from developers and engineers, but ultimately we want to create an entire ecosystem where we're building supply and demand on both sides. So everything that you see here today, is working out of the box and we're looking for trial partners like yourselves to be able to be part of our journey. Thank you very much, James. Uh, next question for Jason. The, the AC grant was mentioned as how this project is financed. Can you tell us more about how you went about it? Yeah, sure. Um, 
the Australian government or Oz Industry um, provide a fund, which is the Accelerating Com um, Commercialisation Grant. Um, the beauty of this fund is they're always looking for technology that they can actually represent the Australian public, and they're looking for companies such as us that are growing and with the acceleration, the commercialization, the capability to be able to work with the government and be funded in a process like this helps us to scale up a lot faster. It also helps us to work with our peers within the industries, as James was mentioning a minute ago. And on top of that, uh, it allows us to be able to create a product that we can really export to the whole world. So um, it's, it's, it's a very good program. There are a number of steps to get involved. This I'd, I'd consider it as three different stages. Uh, the first is where you actually have a screening stage. So you actually have to present to a um, AC or an AC grant mentor, an Oz industry mentor. Um, during that stage, they will work with you to understand exactly what it is that you are, what what solution that you are bringing to the market. You also they'll also work with you to understand what value it's going to have to the market and then once they're actually impressed and they and they believe that this is a product that would um benefit with the market would benefit from as well as the australians uh, being jobs uh exports and um technology then you then they take you on board and from that stage on you work with your um your oz industry mentor and they can help to build the whole um, pitch that in the end and the third stage goes towards being presented and pitched to the um the ac grant committee by the mentor so not only does the mentor help you through the whole process um they they, they do the verification and the screening process, but then they actually help you build the whole use case. And then they take that and, on your behalf and present it to the committee. It's a very, very thorough um, process. It took us quite a long time. And, um, but the beauty in the process is that you learn a lot about your business that you might not have thought about. Uh, there's a lot of questions that they ask and the, the mentors themselves come with a, with a world of um, experience that actually can really help you. So it's a, it's a great opportunity. If you can get involved, I would. Thanks, Jason. And while you're there, I'll ask you the, the next question that our audience has sent through, which is, can you share what the program will look like? Yeah, sure. So, so effectively, the program itself, um, there are a number of stages of it. So, what we've done is we've we've built a large portion of the the um, pro, the, the um, self serve capabilities. Uh, all of these are within our capabilities right now. What we're working with in the AC grant is pulling together the overall shell of it. So effectively, we've got um, the capability of training through um, labeling, as well as um, our, our core AI engine, which which is currently always used at the moment. And then we've got that coupled with um, our AI marketplace. What we're working on in the AC grant, and this is where, as Hamid and James mentioned before, that we, we are reaching out because we want to get feedback from the industry and our peers within the industry. Uh, we want to make sure that the self-serve version from end to end is very logical and usable. So the, so the program going forward over the next six to eight months will be um, over the, probably in, in um, quarter two, Q2, we will be starting to reach out to anybody that's interested. And if you're interested, please register your interest um, in, in, on our um, landing page. Um, then we'll work with you during Q2 really to try and um, identify whether the usability is exactly as we want it to be and, and useful and, and ease to fit um, for all of our customers. So um, going forward, um, we've got a few things that we're building right now, but Q2 is when we will really start reaching out to all of the partners that we're working with at the moment. Thank you very much, Jason. Uh, the next question uh, is for Hamid. Um, I'll say the question as it's been written out here. I'm a computer vision engineer. Would you be able to help promote my AI app for scale and exposure? Sure. So, uh, so we're working through uh, we're working through the finer details of what marketing opportunities and collaboration looks like. Uh, but I can give you a little bit of a flavour. So you can imagine uh, Unleashed Live, remote connectivity, live streaming video. We work very closely with both system integrators and telecommunication organizations. You would have perhaps seen uh, our recent announcement from Vodafone where we're doing some really innovative edge compute work, reducing the latency between inference to notification uh, into the milliseconds, if you like. 
But all of these guys are, whether it's Vodafone or whether it's Verizon Skywood, are channel partners and have the ability to be able to tap into their customer base. So there's that's one area that we can definitely look at uh, promoting your capabilities. Secondly, we get a steady flow of inbound demand every day from a myriad of organizations looking to adopt computer vision. And they have video and they, they utilize video and imagery today, and yet they don't adopt, they haven't adopted a solution and they're looking for a solution. And certainly we can share those, the details of those. And then, and finally, we'll be putting our own marketing dollars into a program where we would look to promote the likes of uh, developers or solutions where we think that there's a real opportunity for uh, market traction. So anyone that's got ideas, we encourage you to head to Unleashed Live forward slash developers, uh, put your details in there, uh, let us know what your thoughts are in terms of use cases, and we'll be in touch. And as Jason said, June, July timeframe is when we're really looking to accelerate this. Thanks, Hamid. Next question for James. What are the quality assurance guidelines and pipelines for the App Store for the AI app? Great. So we, we benchmark our models already against um, existing commercial models. So any model that's coming through our App Store, we will benchmark against some of the models that we already have published for enterprises, um, mainly to ensure that the code is clean and the model runs efficiently on cloud inference. So what that means is we test to ensure the model works in a whole range of different scenarios. But more importantly, we also provide that feedback back to developers and engineers so that they can make the right adjustments so the models can be successful. Ultimately, our aim is to make and foster an ecosystem of high quality industrial apps that are used by companies globally. So what that means is we're not trying to discount apps that are coming to our app store. We're actually trying to help developers get the apps onto our app store. That's partly why we're opening our data sets and we're looking to create these different types of benchmarking tools. Ultimately, we believe that a high quality app store with high quality models will definitely succeed more than an app store that's just has lots and lots of models on top of it. So from a quality assurance guideline perspective, we have very strict gates that each model has to go through. So it's not just to submit it and it's onto the app store. We have a very diligent process of really assessing, benchmarking, quality controlling. And like any organization, we run every model and all of our code through automated tests. Thanks for that detailed answer, James. Um, next question for Jason, uh, and this is a question that's been asked by uh, one of our emerging professionals. Uh, what is the main skill needed for a career in computer vision? Please share how new graduates can grow their career through computer vision. Perfect, thanks, Jamie. Well, I mean, outside of getting a computer science degree, um, there are a number of different areas that I think um, computer vision, well, if you're following the career of computer vision, you can really um, push forward your chances, especially in being hired. Um, uh, there's programming languages, and I'd say one of the, the, the two main programming, or well, Python is a very strong programming language that you need to be um, very fond of or understand. Uh, it has a lot to do with the back end. Uh, the second thing I would also say is you need to have a very strong understanding of mathematics and the capability to, um, to implement that and um, um, utilize that within your uh, programming. Uh, secondly, I'll take it away to the other soft skills, which I, I think often are quite overlooked, and that's things such as a keen eye for detail. So the ability to be able to understand um, and, and identify detail within uh, whatever you're doing and make sure that you capture that within um, the way that you turn around. I think secondly, there's also the, that innovation, the ability to be able to think outside of the square. A lot of people become very fenced in the way they do it. Um, um, and then I think if if you're talking from our perspective, we do a lot with robotics, and I would be saying that in, pati in particular, vision-based robotics, so cameras, um, we are very keen when we're always looking for people as their understanding of how vision and robotics come together. Um, and then on top of that, if you really want to, um, if, if you want to get a good step and you're just a young graduate, I would be reaching out to companies like us and um, meeting up and, and there's a wise man always said, you can always have a, a, a coffee with somebody to find out more information and that often leads on to other 
other opportunities. So always ask, put your hand up, find somebody that you can, you can find as a mentor, uh, utilize that person as a mentor, and that'll help you get into the industry. So just recapping a good computer science degree, strong understanding of mathematics, uh, good keen eye for detail, the ability to be able to think outside of the square and from our perspective, anything to do with robotics and that combination of robotics and um, on vision uh, is where I would suggest that you start. That's great. Thanks, Jason. Uh, next question for James. What can developers do to overcome the challenge of adverse weather conditions? Great question. Um, training, uh, ultimately more training to improve the robustness of any given model. It's really important to do more training with the input data with a variety of different conditions. I think too often what you see is people training models on very, very constrained scenarios. So when you hear things like, oh, you know, I have a sheep counting model that is 99.99% accurate. What you often find is the camera is looking just at the sheep. There's only one coming in at a time. It's perfect lighting conditions. And your model can work in those great scenarios. But the reality is sheep do not always stay in one line. There isn't always one camera. There's different lighting. So what that really means is sometimes you need to really tweak your code and your parameters. You need to give it more irregular data. You need to throw more of that at the model. And the more you train it, the more robust it becomes. There are going to be some scenarios where the conditions are going to be very difficult to overcome, but it does cr take creative problem solving. To give you an example, sometimes we've seen use cases where everything works fine, but the moment it starts raining, you have water droplets on your, on your camera. And all of a sudden, your model fails completely. Of course, there are some scenarios where there's not a lot that you can do about it, but the more you have, have uh, input data, where you have these random or different weather conditions, you can start being smarter in how you train the model itself. There are certain things like pre-processing steps that you can take, whether it's about anti-blur, anti-shake, or maybe like, you know, going from a wide field of use to something more narrow. There's a lot of different steps that can be taken to ensure that your model definitely works across more and more different weather conditions, locations, or lighting as well. Thank you, James. Next question for Hamid. Uh, and this question, I think it has a little bit of a ethical uh, lean to it. The question is, what, why would you say we need AI, the AI in the first place? Is it meant to decrease or increase employment rates? Well, that's a, <clears throat> it's, um, that's actually, a, you could argue it's an ethical one. It is a, it has political implications. It has all, sort, all sorts of uh, implications for society. The way that we view the role of computer vision and AI within the industrial landscape is that it is augmenting the role of people within roles. So we're, we're moving and we're shaping the way that people work in those workflows and moving them from just simply in, in inspectors or visual inspectors to being more in control of a particular process. And you'll see that it's actually about improved productivity. It's very rare that we're going to have a scenario where people are removed from the process. To give you an example, today we do wind farm, wind blade, wind turbine blade inspections. And the machine learning algorithm detects a number of known types of faults within wind turbines. But there are always, there's always a human that cross checks that information and actually retrains the machine so that it knows more about the types of faults that take place. So it's actually, it's actually a tool in which people are going to work closer and more tandem with than simply the likes of people being edged out and machines coming in. So I hope that gives you, gives you an answer. Yeah, that's great, Hamid, thank you very much. Uh, next question uh, for James. Uh, James, is there a way that we can integrate uh, this technology for smart parking in uh, in the street using ANPR, which I understand is automatic number plate recognition? Yes, great. absolutely. Um, so I'm going to answer this question in two parts. We see a lot of customers who have a lot of cameras that don't have any kind of license plate recognition at all. So part of part of what our capability is that we can turn these dumb cameras into smarter cameras so that they can do license plate recognition. That's a huge benefit because 
we see cities, consultants, service providers have cameras all the time. In fact, we're working with a customer right now who was using a handheld camera, driving along the street and just doing license plate detection. Now, specifically for cameras that already have NPR, um, it depends on whether you want additional computer vision capabilities on top of that, right? So sometimes it's not enough to say, we recognize the vehicle that hey, is their number plate. Some of the follow on questions might be, which way do they turn? Where do they go afterwards? How long were they there for? So the moment you start breaking down the object into other parameters or details that you want to be able to identify, this is where we can actually flourish. In regards to um, street and parking more broadly, we're working with cities in the United States looking at this exact problem. Parking is a huge challenge and a huge issue. And we're looking, we're currently already working with cities, tapping into the existing traffic camera networks, streaming that into our platform. And we're running a couple of things. One of them is parking utilization. So we're able to identify how much parking space is actually being used, um, when, what is the average dwell time of any of these vehicles. We're also looking at pickups and drop-offs with more and more Ubers and Lyfts happening globally. It's really affecting the way that traffic and curbs are being utilized. So we're combining, you know, vehicle detection with dwell time with people detection to really provide more data around that. So parking is a huge, huge topic of which license plate recognition definitely is one of them. Thanks, James. I'm sure there'll be a fair few uh, local councils very interested in uh, discussing that further. <laughs> uh, whilst I've got you, James, uh, where sorry, the next question is, where does the overlap between computer vision and IoT happen? How different are they from each other? That's a great, great question. And we get that a lot. And in some ways, a camera is a type of IoT sensor. But when you think about IoT in general, it's used to detect a whole range of different things. It could be sound, it could be vibration, it could be light. The way we think about it is there are a lot of things that you can't put an IoT device on. You can't always put an IoT device on every person, every vehicle. You can't put on a tree. You can't put on a crack. You can't put on a fault. There's just a lot of things that are quite intangible, which is why in many ways, a lot of inspections done today are still with your vision, right? We use vision as a way to confirm or deny whether something's happening. So at Unleash Live, we focus on vision as a sense in addition to IoT. We're not trying to compete with it. We're trying to realize that there are some things where, in some very specific scenarios where it's just not practical to put an IoT device. Not to mention cameras is something that we notice a lot of our customers already have. So could you put an IoT device to detect something like water levels? Absolutely. But more and more customers are saying, well, wouldn't it be easier that I can just put a low cost camera looking at it, detect the water levels, but also detect more things. And to give you one very quick example, uh, we work for the city of Sacramento and they were implementing new bike lanes. So one of the vendors put in a whole range of different IoT sensors to be able to detect vehicles and for parking, right? So they could detect how many park cars were being parked for general parking rates. And then a couple of months later, a new bike lane had to be installed and all the vehicles got shifted by one meter. All those IoT sensors stopped working because it wasn't calibrated for the new change. Whereas with something like cameras, there's a lot more flexibility in how you operate. So it really depends on the scenario, but ultimately we don't think of cameras and IoT devices as something that's competing. It's about finding the right sensor for the right use case. Great, thank you, James. I'm sorry to say I'm going to palm a third consecutive question to you as well. Uh, the next, next question from our audience member, delays on live streaming are frequent, even with high tech devices. Mm -hmm. In this case, when deploying AI techniques, can we expect to have accurate results? I think that's a, it's another great question. And obviously, if you have no data coming through, you're going to have some drop in quality, right? I think that's the reality of what's happening. Um, with the way that we work at Unleash Life, we spend a lot of time, although this, this talk today was focused on AI and our entire AI pipeline, we also focus a lot of time on our video streaming capabilities. So we work with a lot of our customers to understand what is the ultimate goal that they're trying to achieve, right? If there are small accuracy drops once in a while, maybe that's okay. But we focus a lot on stream optimization, bandwidth optimization, and we also train our models kind of on the lowest quality possible. So we don't assume that our customers will give us 1080, 1440p, or even 4K video. We sometimes work with 320 by 500p. It is tiny. If you saw that on your screen today, you think it's so blurry. But ultimately, we need to make sure that we can provide data and analytics on the lowest common denominator. And often that's with low bandwidth. The other way that we think about it as a business is we spend a lot of time with our integration and partnerships. 
So we work with a lot of telecommunication providers to ensure that we're able to get the best connectivity possible. The other thing about cloud computing is you often hear, oh, but the computing is in the cloud. How do you get the data there in the first place? So we have partnerships with telcos and with AWS to deploy our cloud infrastructure at the edge on the network as well. So we're able to do sort of a cloud edge compute, um, increasingly really decreasing the time, decreasing the latency, and decreasing the packet distance that needs to be traveled for any kind of analysis that needs to be done. Thank you very much, James. Uh, I think we've got time for maybe the last couple. Uh, this one's for Hamid. With the use of this advanced technology, do you think we could better the challenges of the COVID-19 situation? Absolutely. So we currently uh, use our service. We have transport providers using our service, uh, adopting for social distancing adherence, on top of those social distancing adherence, we're utilizing face mask detection. We overlay that data and provide them with real-time analytics on both social distancing not being adhered to and face mask not being adhered to. So these aren't, as I've mentioned, this isn't about tracking individuals or this is about trend analytics. This is about giving organizations information, real-time information, valuable information that they can then make decisions about and that's that's helped in where we can see that uh, spaces are planned better spaces can be utilized better and a raft of other applications so absolutely COVID is one of the areas where we see enormous growth um, and given that this is the last question it would be remiss of me not to say head to unleashedlife.com forward slash developers to share your views sign up and be part of this uh, journey of us Thank you very much, Hamid. And uh, unfortunately, that, that is uh, all the time that we have for tonight. So um, I'd like to thank everyone uh, at home or in their offices for, for joining us this evening, our member audience. Uh, we hope you enjoyed and, and benefited from the, uh, the speakers' insights today. And once again, I'd like to say a special thank you uh, to our speakers from Unleash Live, to, to Hamid, James, and Jason for sharing their insightful presentation and for answering our questions. Um, stay tuned for our other events and check out our website for any updates. And, uh, Thank you very much and enjoy the rest of your night. Thank you.